This is Mike. We're back out in the field with the Axcalibur. This is the Choppa M6 survival rifle, 12 gauge over 22 long rifle. We took this gun out for our first review and testing. It functioned fairly well with all of the different caliber conversions. We did find that the 20 gauge shotgun shell did stick. I've taken the gun back. We've cleaned it, lubed it up, and we're going to now sit down and find out how accurate this gun really is. When we did the first test, the fiber optic sight uh, seemed to be a little coarse. It was fine for shotgun, but it didn't feel like I could get a really good sight picture when I was doing the center fires. And our groups were not very good at all. And so we wanted to see if we could improve the groups and really test this gun today for accuracy. So what I've done is I've taken the uh, gun and we purchased a scope. This is a Leupold. It's a shotgun scope, two to seven magnification. So I figured it's made for a shotgun. It should be able to withstand all the shock that this gun can give it. And now we can sit down with this rifle and see what kind of groups we can actually get when I feel like I have a good sight picture on the target. One thing I'd like to mention to you guys, I'm a consumer just like you. My goal is to provide an objective review so that you can see what the product functions like before you make any decisions about whether this is something that you might be interested in or not. One of the issues that I had was trying to figure out how to zero this gun. Now we have a good scope on this, so I'll have a good sight picture. And so uh, from studying the internet, I've looked at all of the different cartridges and multiple loadings, and you can kind of get a idea of some of the numbers that I've done. Um, So what I did is I looked at data regarding the trajectory of the different centerfire rounds. There were multiple loads for each caliber, and I just took averages so that we could see if there are trends. And basically, what I found is for most of the calibers this gun fires, the maximum point-blank range is about 100 yards. The trajectories are very similar for most of the loadings and most of the calibers. And if you look at averages, it seems like if we take about a two inch high 25 yard zero, then for most cartridges, it'll still be two inches high at 50 yards and about two to three inches low at 100 yards. And for a survival situation, when you're not sure what kind of ammo you're going to be able to get your hands on, it looks like if we zero this gun about two inches high at 25 yards, it'll give us a pretty functional range of about 100 yards with most of the center fire rounds. And what I'd like to do today with the scope in place is sit down on a bench, rest this gun, and then shoot each caliber at the targets. And let's see what kind of groups we get and how accurate this rifle is actually going to be able to perform. So what I want to do now is we're going to run through every caliber conversion. We're going to shoot at the targets and then we'll look at the targets after we're done. I'll leave this on, a, uh, on the four power magnification. We're going to start with 380 auto. From our first video, we talked a lot about how to put these in. So we're going to do three shots at 380 auto, and then we're going to run right on through the caliber conversions at four, four times magnification. Now we're going to go to 9 millimeter. Boy Smith and Wesson.
Want to go to 45 ECT? Radiate special and 357 magnum with the same sleeve. Forty four magnum. Oh, okay, interesting. So the uh, scope mount has now come loose, pulled out of the uh, receiver. That could be a problem. We didn't get to 45 long colt. I'm going to take this back to the shop and we'll take a look at it. And the screws have come out and we'll examine that and talk about that in the shop, see exactly what's happened. In our first outing with this Chiapa M6 Excalibur survival rifle, we started off the video with a little goofy intro, a reference to Survivor Man series. Um, but I really want to put those playful ways away and let's get down to some brass tacks. In our first video with this gun, the goal was to try to show you how easy or difficult it was to use the different caliber conversions for the 12 gauge barrel. And so we wanted to go through each caliber that this gun is designed to use and see how easy it was, uh, how difficult it was to eject, to extract, uh, how difficult it was to remove one um, caliber conversion and replace it with another caliber conversion. So the video ended up being fairly long, but we wanted to give you a, a real evaluation of what it would be like and to use this rifle. And so that was the goal for that. Now one thing about the first test that was not very impressive at all was the size of the groups that we were seeing when we used the center fire adapters. And I ascribed that mainly to shooter error and the fact that this sight was really maybe more appropriate for a shotgun but it seemed uh, that the fiber optic front red dot sight was very large compared to what I'm used to with rifles. And I thought maybe that was the reason that the groups weren't so good. So I wanted to go ahead and mount a scope to this gun and then go back out. And then in our second test, we were going to really look at the accuracy of this rifle because certainly if you're in a hunting survival situation and you have very few rounds, you don't want to be wasting those rounds with a miss rather than a mill. So we went out and we got a loophole. This is a loophole shotgun scope. It's a two to seven power. It has a very long eye relief, about six inches eye relief. And so we thought that this would be an appropriate scope for this type of weapon. And then we could sit down with a very good sight picture and really determine what size groups these adapters were able to deliver. So we went out in the field for our second look at the Chiapa Excalibur. And I wanted to go through each caliber again and let's compare our groups with the scope compared to our groups with the iron sights that came on the gun. But unfortunately, before we could get through all the different calibers, the scope I noticed had come loose. And when we looked closely, 
the rail itself was loose from the gun. And so we're back now. We want to take a look at exactly what happened. So I had used a, a quick release ring set. There again, in a survival situation, if the scope fails you, you want to be able to ditch the scope and get back to the iron sights that are on the gun. So we use this, uh, this particular type of setup when we mounted the uh, scope to the gun. And then, um, like I said, back out uh, when we were in the field in our second outing with this gun, uh, when we had gotten to the 44 Magnum, I noticed that the scope was shaking loose. I'm not sure exactly when in the whole scheme of things um, the failure occurred, but let's just look closely at uh, what happened here. You can see the separation here. These have Torx heads. See what happens here. Let's take this off. And take a look. Now these rails have uh, certainly been criticized because they are plastic. And these are actually pretty cheap. Pretty cheap plastic rails. Let's uh, look at the screws. The screws seem, they don't seem to have sheared off. So maybe they just backed out and loosened up. Let's look. We need to look at the threads. Certainly, um, it seems like they could have used a little bit higher quality metal rail for this gun. Uh, one of the criticisms that I've uh, heard a lot is the, uh, the stock. It looks like styrofoam, and uh, it certainly um, is, it leaves a lot to be desired. Uh, for me, the stock has no cushioning effect and it has no cover for the spare ammo. So those would be the two criticisms. Now the material it's made out of is in fact a very strong material. It is not styrofoam. It will be durable, but uh, it has no significant cushioning effect that I could feel when I was shooting the 12 gauge. And it, uh, it, the storage compartments are not covered, which is a it's really issue in, in my opinion. Now the threads of the screw appear to be intact. Now I don't know whether the threads in the receiver have been stripped out or not. Um, we will uh, we'll have to look at that. The holes for these screws are, are very shallow looking. And um, This looks like it's just uh, inadequate. Really for uh, this kind of gun, it's shooting 12 gauge, it's shooting 44 magnums. Um, it looks like they could have done a much better job uh, with the rails, both the way they mounted and the quality of the rails themselves. I mean, obviously on the side, if you're gonna mount a flashlight or something to that effect, um, it's not as critical, but if uh, for the top rail specifically, you've got to have a quality mount when you're talking about a gun that shoots this kind of caliber. So I think uh, one issue that we have discovered now with this rifle, obviously, is the quality of the rails. They have been criticized, but now uh, from a functional standpoint, um, I think we've shown that they're really inadequate uh, for this particular firearm. Now we've got to determine uh, what the fix is going to be and uh, what it's going to take to accomplish that. But so we're taking a closer look at the screws that came out of the Chiapa M6 that were holding the top rail adapter on. What I noticed was that the threads appeared to be intact, but they were very coarse and they were very tapered. Uh, they appeared more like a screw that you'd see out of a Eastern Block AK-47. The machining just um, did not appear to be very high quality. And as a comparison, I got a screw out of the mount from a Marlin 22 and a 39A. It's a, this is a 22 long rifle. Let me show this. This is a 22 long rifle, American-made scope mount screw. And this goes into the receiver. The reason I'm using this as a comparison because this goes into the metal of the top of the receiver. 
of a Marlin so you can mount a scope on your 22 long rifle. Now this is a 22 long rifle, not a 12 gauge or a 44 Magnum. And you can see the quality of the screw. Number one, the screw is larger. And number two, the quality of the machining of the threads looks significantly better. You can see there's a, a, always a little bit of a taper on that last thread so that the screw can start easier, but really uh, the threads are fairly parallel and look a lot higher quality and the screw itself is larger compared to the screw that is used in the Chiapa M6 Excalibur. Three of these smaller screws that appear to be not nearly as well machined as a screw that's found in a, an American made gun holding a plastic Picatinny rail. You can see the difference. There's the screw from a Marlin 22 long rifle lever action gun that goes into the top of the receiver. And you know, we looked at the uh, holes themselves. Actually uh, took the dissecting stereoscopic microscope and examined these. The, the threads essentially appear intact. There's really not a lot of difference between the threads on the rearward hole compared to the threads on the muzzle end, but they're very coarse in appearance and very shallow. This is the scope that we mounted. And if we take a look here, we'll turn our scale on. And the scope with the rings, you can see is basically, I don't know if you can see that, 1.1 pounds. So you know, but maybe was that 17 ounces or so. So we put 17 ounces of weight on top of this gun and it was not able to handle it. Now, as far as the fix goes, let's talk about that a little bit. So in regards to what options we have as far as the scope rail and the problem that we've identified with the scope rail, I have emailed the company. As soon as I get a reply from the company, I will post that on the comment section of this particular video so you can follow along and see what they have to say as far as what they propose to, uh, to fix this problem. In the meantime, we've discovered that basically you cannot mount a scope. This scope had a mass just over one pound, including the rings, and that was just too much force under recoil for the very small screws and the plastic rail to hold up to that. And it failed with just a few shots. As a temporary fix, so I feel like I can go back out and give you guys some kind of information about the accuracy of the adapters. We're going to try to temporarily mount a small red dot sight with a two minute of angle dot. I feel like that will give me a much better sight picture and I'll be able to more accurately tell you what kind of groups we'll be able to get from the different centerfire caliber adapters. So stay tuned. We're going to put a red dot scope on this. We're going to talk about what kind of accuracy we feel like we can achieve with the adapters and we'll keep you updated as far as what happens when the factory gets back to us about what they think is an adequate fix for the rail on the top of this gun. Thanks for watching.